Hi, and welcome to the 16th Horasis India Meet. I have the pleasure today of sitting with the author of The Next New, The Fifth Industrial Revolution. So I have to ask you, my first question, Pranjal, what was the fourth one? And what is the fifth one? So, you know, the industrial revolutions that we've seen uh, are, have been broadly categorized uh, into one, two, three, four. Uh, first was when the steam engine was, mm. was created. The second was when the electricity was, was discovered and all the, uh, you know, industrial activity which was spurred by that. And the third was because of the computer chip yeah. uh, and the computer revolution. The fourth is about the connectedness of how computers started talking to each other, mm -hmm. their human, uh, human and uh, machine interface. Yes. So technologies like drones, like artificial intelligence, like Internet of Things. Yes. So all of these uh, uh, collection of these technologies together are called the technologies of the fourth industrial revolution. But now we are in the fifth industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the fifth one. <laughs> I was you trying know, to keep I, that I, suspense. I love how you built it up. I was like, and then. <laughs> and then, yeah. And so then, I was trying to keep the suspense on for a nice. while. Absolutely. Uh, so Tell me about it. So then the fourth industrial revolution uh, technologies became mainstream, which is in the last few years or so. It was about cost and efficiency. Let's yes. do things faster. And there's yeah. AI in your phone, your, your Stronger, laptop. Stronger, faster, better. Shorter, faster, better, but in the process, uh, one thing was left out, that mm. what was the impact the technology was having on people? Um, maybe at a very simple and basic level, too much of exposure to technology, yeah. mobile devices, uh, and the impact it has on our mental health, our physical health, and of course, you know, the issues of misinformation, a wrong kind of data being uh, created, mm. Uh, issues of data privacy, mm. uh, then of course the element was that, look, all this is fine, but you have billions of devices coming up, what about the sustainability part of it? Yes. So the fifth industrial revolution is about a caring industrial revolution, yeah. Yeah. which means that now the other stakeholders of society, the government, people, regulators, uh, academia, they're saying, look, we like these technologies, but they need to be guardrailed. Yeah. So we need to do it in a way that it protects the people and protects the environment. And therefore, you cannot have a complete freedom for technology to do what it does. Yes. Uh, and this process has begun now. Uh, and we have calculated in this book that uh, this three forces of technology, sustainability and caring for society or the social impact, which includes values and ethics, uh, is forcing companies to change their business models. Yeah. And this is triggering a $25 trillion creative destruction mm. of business and revenue models, which means the old models are dissipating and diminishing, mm. and, and new, new ones. ones are emerging. And so, tell me one thing, Pranjo, because sometimes as, you know, as CEOs and CEOs of today, you are, there's just so much that's going on geopolitically, like you said, you know, now the fifth industrial revolution, there's more and more variables, there's more and more complexity, which is happening in the business world. And you say that the models of the past are dissipating and there's new ones coming up. If I'm a CEO today, how should I even begin to think about this in such an ever-changing environment? So you have to begin by thinking about that the product or service that you're offering um, is of course for the consumer, mm -hmm. but also think about it that it is for a citizen. Mm. So don't just look at profit. And one of the things I say in my talks is that the fifth industrial revolution is not just about profits, but about people and the planet. Mm. So the starting point for any CEO or a business leader is that once you think of a product, you have to factor in the, f the, the elements of making it sustainable. So are the materials I'm using are green enough? Uh, is the process and the value chain that I'm using, is it green enough? What are my manufacturing practices? Um, if it's a service, then you have to say, well, uh, what kind of energy am I using for providing that service? If I'm extracting data of consumers and citizens in the process, which is inevitable, yes. uh, how am I uh, anonymizing it? it? Yeah. How do you respect it? How do you yeah. safeguard it against uh, uh, cyber attacks, for yes. example? So willy-nilly there are dangers in in whatever you do so 
But if you are aware of these challenges, then a business leader will say, well, I have this. These are the guardrails I'm putting around it. Yeah. These are the checks and balances. And now I will proceed with these in mind, which perhaps previously many people didn't uh, yeah. care much about. Yes. And, and, and do you think that now, more so from a diffusion of responsibilities because when I hear you talk about the fourth industrial revolution it almost seemed that there was a technology and it was new and IOT and great great fancy things but there's a diffusion of responsibility where no one was taking that blame for it whereas now as leaders as like you said the government as regulators we are all accountable for it so there's almost a bit of a, a swing uh, in that, w would you agree or what's your view on that? So, absolutely. So, there is uh, levels of accountabilities have risen to uh, far more important uh, uh, levels to the extent that not just the tech creators, but there's accountability and responsibility, I would say, on them as well. Now, the big tech companies are, as you know, being questioned mm -hmm. and being quarreled by uh, global uh, uh, governments saying that, look, be careful. Yeah. We, aren't, we want to understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So there are issues of privacy, but there are also issues of market dominance, anti-competitive uh, yeah, anti practices. Yes. Uh, there are issues of overpricing, monopoly pricing. Yeah. Uh, for discrimination. Services. Exactly. So online stores are being questioned about that. Yes. Um, that are you also doing predatory pricing? Yes. Then there are issues of uh, creating algorithmic addiction. Mm. So for social media and various such feeds which are there for the younger people, there are issues of addiction. Yes. Now, this addiction is not by accident. Yes. Uh, now it's there created. is enough evidence to show that the algorithms are designed to use colors and sounds and various yeah. things to make sure that you are constantly the on dopamine the phone. hit of the notification of exactly. the likes. So yes. that dopamine hit is is becomes a serious challenge for uh, users and consumers. So, as you said, accountability now lies on both the service provider yes. and also responsibility on the user. Yes. So society is far more aware of it. But I, if you ask me, is there enough action about it? Yeah. Not so much. Yeah. However, now new kinds of regulators are coming up across mm. the world. There is a concept of an e-safety commissioner, mm. which some countries yeah. have appointed. And a there, GDPR, uh, exactly. someone to do GDPR. So GDPR is about data protection, yes. but an e-safety commissioner's role is to, to ensure that no harm comes to you, Trish, and yeah. me in the digital era. How wow. do we protect individuals, consumers and citizens? Incredible. And if there's a violation, you have to pay for it. Oh, that's, uh, uh, that's fantastic. And, and, and in your view, because, you know, sometimes there's different things that people can do at different levels. As, as leaders, there's, of course, you know, that cascading down, but also for the youth of tomorrow, for leaders of tomorrow that would be that would be entering this extremely uncertain, this extremely new business environment. And right now, you know, it's the fifth industrial revolution. I'm sure it'll continue. What should they be thinking about? And what are some of the skill sets that you reckon they should arm themselves with already in order to be the future leaders uh, of tomorrow? So one thing which is very interesting is that the today's uh, uh, younger uh, leaders, uh, students, young professionals and entrepreneurs are, are digital natives, yes. as, as the phrase goes. Uh, so they are very comfortable with technology. But I think what they perhaps are not aware of is the impact it has on, on uh, right. health. Uh, social behavior is, is changing because of that. Now again, some part of it is natural and normal evolution because you don't expect uh, a 20 year old in uh, this era to behave the same way that a 20 year old behaved uh, 50 years ago. So that's one part of the evolution. Sure. But the second part is, how will the relationship between humans and technology, how will it evolve? Yes. When will we know how to harness it in a way that yeah. benefits us, yes. or rather than it going to a level where you can't harness it. Yes. And harnessing And it becomes means, too big for... Uh, exactly. So harnessing means that you have to use it in a, in a controlled way for a productive purpose. Yes. Electricity is a great example, yes. right? Now, electricity, if it's not controlled and harnessed, it will burn your house down. Yeah. If you channelize it, if you put it with the right safeguards, it's going to light up the house, yeah. right? And it, it, runs the, it runs the world. 
So I think the younger leaders have to understand the importance of drawing the line on use of technology and being able to contain it. That's part one. As far as skills are concerned, I think one, uh, they have to realize that skills is not a finite process. Yeah. The skill set need is going to evolve. evolve at a much faster and a shorter cycle than, than it used to. Yes. Um, it used to be that you get a, you got a degree and you couldn't live off the degree for 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> Today you can barely uh, live off the degree in th for three years. In fact, yeah. you begin your degree and by the time you end it, yeah, it's obsolete. Exactly. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I think there's also the, the, the need for uh, legacy systems in yeah. education to reorient themselves. The whole concept of a three or four year, four -year degree uh, yes. may not be as relevant today. Yes. Uh, yes. So shorter learning cycles for newer but and newer frequent. skills and, and frequent. Yes. So we are in uncharted territory. I don't yeah. think anybody has a solution, but yeah. being cognizant of it is the first step towards finding a solution. And one final question, just because we were talking about the third, fourth and the fifth one. What is your view of the sixth industrial revolution? Do you have a point of view on what that could look like? So, Trish, I think that's a terrific <laughs> question because uh, there are people who would say, uh, I have not coined these phrases. These are <laughs> phrases which people sure. far better, uh, who are more learned than me have, have uh, created. The view is that if this uh, revolution doesn't succeed, there won't be a sixth uh, industrial <laughs> revolution, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is that firstly, you have to make sure that technology takes care of people and the planet. Yes. Now, if once we reach that, perhaps the next one could be about technologies that we haven't even thought of. Yes. So uh, it could be completely virtual technologies. It could be uh, one element which is emerging is dematerialization of everything. So for example, uh, the SIM card in your phone yes. doesn't have to be a card. It could be a software. Soon a phone may not be uh, a physical yes. uh, device anymore. So the dematerialization of a lot of devices and others could possibly be the next one, but who knows. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pranjal. It was such a pleasure. Thank and you. again, we're with Pranjal Sharma, the author of The Next New. And thank you for Thank a you very so engaging much. discussion. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you.